um, when those came to life, they really started causing some of the metabolic problems that we are in. Specifically, we have been taught now for decades that we should eat diets that are primarily carbohydrate based and that we should eat frequently throughout the day. Um, that I, I reject that idea completely. Uh, the problem with that um, model of eating is that you are basing your diet not only on the one macronutrient that is not essential to humans. In other words, you don't need to eat a specific amount of carbohydrates per day to thrive. That, that doesn't exist. Um, but also that happens to be the macronutrient that spikes the hormone insulin the most. And so by eating a diet that's primarily carbohydrate-based, which is spiking blood sugar levels, which is then spiking insulin, and by eating uh, frequently throughout the day, five or six times a day, as we've been told is, is ideal in, in, through many authorities, uh, it means that uh, the average person is spending every waking moment in a state of elevated insulin. And for men, this is a unique problem because um, the longer insulin is elevated, um, the more it's stimulating fat cells to grow. And as in men, as fat cells grow, they begin expressing an enzyme called aromatase. And aromatase is an enzyme that's normally only in high levels in the ovaries in women. Um, and, and aromatase job is to take testosterone and to convert it into estrogens. And what happens in fat cells for men, as I noted, and this will start to happen more as insulin is elevated, is that the fat cells, as they grow, will literally start to take in testosterone and release and turn it into estrogens. Um, that, of course, starts to cause problems in the fellow with regards to fertility and even lean mass and how he's storing his fat around his body because it's sex hormones that tell the body where to store fat. Um, you know, androgens like testosterone or estrogens um, storing, telling the body to store fat in different places. So that whole idea of basing our diet primarily on carbohydrates, I think not only uh, is causing problems with regards to chronically elevated insulin and the metabolic consequences of that, which is a big part of my research, but even the sexual consequences in men where he has less testosterone than he should ideally have. But, but even back one step with regards to insulin resistance, the longer a man has elevated insulin and the more insulin resistant he's becoming – the more insulin resistant his blood vessels become. And that may seem um, like an irrelevant problem. In fact, it couldn't be more relevant um, with regards to men's health. Uh, in fact, insulin resistance is the most common cause of erectile dysfunction. And, and basically, insulin will normally tell blood vessels to dilate. And so that becomes a fundamental process with regards to normal erectile function. Certain blood vessels must dilate to regulate blood flow However, as the blood vessels become insulin resistant, insulin's attempting to dilate the blood vessel, increasing blood flow, but the blood vessels stay constricted, keeping blood flow to a minimum, resulting in erectile dysfunction, the most common cause of infertility in men. And so kind of across the board, from the level of producing testosterone from the testicles, even to vasodilation and normal erectile function, the further a man is going from metabolic health, um, the more infertile and, and, and more likely he is to experience disruption in normal sexual function. 